Welcome to part three of our Focus HVAC repair. We're gonna put it back together now. So first thing we need to do is we need to get this uh, control put back on. Now this can be a little bit intimidating if uh, you've never done it before. So let me show you how this goes. This right here is your control for your top door and it goes on the back. Let's see if I can find out where this thing is supposed to go. All right, so this will go on here. I do believe this is where that goes. Yep, that's where that goes. There's a little hole right here. And I think that goes in that hole. Yep, it's gonna go like that. But you got to put that on last because this part here, this matrix, if you want to call it that, has to go on first. So you put this on first. You got your heater door down here. You got to make sure that locks in down there. And then you push this on like that. And then this here sits inside this track. And it goes inside like that. Then you have four silver screws, which are seven millimeter. And you gotta put these silver screws back in. So you're gonna have one that goes up here. You have one that goes in here. You're gonna have one that goes on the back, which goes up in here. have one that goes down here and what this does make sure that you get your levers connected before you tighten this down that's why you want to leave these screws loose so we've got some rods that need to be inserted before we can begin here we need to roll that up and get that inside that track right there and we can go ahead and tighten them screws down. Which I just use a nut driver and a socket, but I gotta find my nut driver. So it's okay. Alright, so I'm gonna drive them screws down. And then when we get that on, I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so after you get your controls installed, you want to grab your hand, your gray knob here. Because that's the one we fixed. That's our blend door. You want to put your knob on there. And you want to make sure that it functions. It functions like it's supposed to. I think we're good. All right, so... Let that hang down. We got to get our uh, cover on the front of our heater box. These two holes right here are going to go onto some welded threaded uh, studs on the bottom of the crash bar. Don't put your side bolt in yet. You're going to do that afterwards because you're going to have to uh, put a bolt in the top on each side of your crash bar to hold it up. And then... Uh, well, I'll show you in more detail when we put the crash bar in. So we got to get our heater duct put back on our front. So we're going to pull our crash bar forward, slide this down inside, make sure it's lined up on all of the studs. And we're going to push this back down. Make sure that your uh, studs, make sure that these go onto these uh, right here. You want to go ahead and you want to pull up Make sure that they go up all the way up on them. All right. Rock, them, rock it until it gets up there, and then you'll be fine. All right, make sure all your wiring is clear. Go ahead and get it lined up on this stud over here. Because now we're going to be putting our crash bar in. Don't forget to engage your Christmas tree. So... 
put the crash bar in, you're going to have to put a bolt. Move you over here so you can see what we're doing. You need a bolt in this hole and a bolt in that top hole. And uh, I'll show you why in just a minute. So you're just going to put a bolt in it. You're not going to tighten it down. So grab your glove box area. Pick up. All right. I need to get on the driver's side. So we're going to show you what's going on on the driver's side. All right. So on the driver's side, you've got a, an alignment right here on this crash bar. So you have to get the crash bar lined up inside the hole right here. So you're going to take your short extension with your 10. You're going to feed it through the hole in the side. Grab your bolt with one hand until you got your socket secured on the other. And then you're going to hold your bolt like this. You're going to pick up and going to push it to the left. As far over as you can get it. Don't worry about it lining up right now. Pick it up just a little bit so you can get some thread started. Okay? Get about two or three threads started. Now you see, this is why you got to put a bolt in it. So we're going to put a bolt in the top. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And what that's going to do is that's going to line this up. One other thing. Wear gloves when you do this because these are sharp. I've already cut my finger up on it when I took this apart in part two or part one. Part one, I took this apart. I cut my finger. If you don't have gloves, wrap a rag around it. Pick up. Put your bolt through. Started a couple threads. Don't tighten it up. We're going to tighten them all up in the end. All right, so you're going to set that down. I'm going to direct your attention to the other side. We're going to put the bolt in that side, and then you're going to see why we have to put the bolts in it here in just a second. Grab your glove box area down here, pick up with one hand and then put this through. Start a couple threads on it. All right, so what this has done is this has leveled out your crash bar. So now we can go ahead. I'll move you back over to the driver's side and I'll show you what we're going to do here. I'm actually going to sit you in the seat and kind of get a better view of what's going on here. All right, you can see a little bit of what's going on. So I'm going to show you what's happening here. All right, so on the other side of this bolt right here, you have your side bolt that goes into your crash bar. I'm going to give you a better view of what that looks like. All right, so that is what you're looking at. As you tighten up your bolt, that's going to draw in to this spot right here that's made for it. You can't tighten up the front bolts until the side bolts tightened up because this is an alignment pin. So I'm gonna tighten that bolt up until I can't tighten it no more. And then we'll go back through. This is a bit of a challenge because you also have to watch what you're doing here. As you see it draw in, you may have to pick up slightly to get it to feed into the hole. Alright, so we've gone as far as we can by hand, so now I'm going to put my ratchet on it. Try to... See how that's drawing that in. All right, you want to be able to take your socket off your ratchet. So I got it stuck on here. So, But you get the general idea here because you're going to, this has to slide all the way over and go inside. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So I'm going to finish this and then I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll move on. All right, so I got to the point where it gets really tight. So then what happens is it will pick up and self-align into the hole. So as I tighten it down, 
we're set, okay? And uh, we need to look at our witness marks here. Looks like they're good on that one. That one will line up just fine, so we'll go ahead and we'll put these two other bolts in this side. We'll do the same on the pastor side. And then we'll move on to the next part, but I wanted to show you this so that you know what you're looking for. See, it will just draw itself up into the hole. And then you wanna take your socket out, and close your door here. This part's done. So I'm gonna zip these in real quick and then uh, we'll move on to the next step. All right, we got our bolts in over here. Don't forget your four bolts down there in the bottom of your crash bar brace. So next thing we need to do is we need to get our driver's side duct work in. We're going to put the passenger side in. But we're going to do it differently because we got an airbag we got to deal with. So let's get you set up here so that you can see how this is going to go. This is going to go real fun, let me tell you. All right, so getting back. Locate your driver's side ducts. These are directional, so you will know if you got the wrong ones real quick. So let's see. Plus, it's marked. So this one here says left hand. See, it says left hand right there on your duct. Okay, we need that one. And we need a little tube that goes with it. That's also marked. See? That one's also marked. All right. And we're going to put them in in reverse order that we took them out. So we're going to put the top vent in first. And that fits like this. These line up to corresponding holes. So let me get to the other side here and I'll get this one for you. All right, this one has to go up and under. All right, this one's in the right spot because there's a push pin for that one. So that one's correct. This one slides up. All right, so we got a. All right, we got our duct going in the wrong direction. It goes in this way. We got to feed it up like this. And then we got to locate our hole, which is right here on the side of the front cover. Make sure you get it on the vent. Make sure it's on the vent front. You'll know you got it right when your Christmas trees line up. So, looks like we got it. We're on. So your Christmas tree goes in this hole over here in front of the fuse box. Make sure it goes back in that hole right there. Our driver's side vents are in. All right, let me see. All right. All right, so we got our driver's side vent in. All right, so let me show you where. Okay, so on your Let's see, that's where your airbag bolts. We can, we're gonna put the airbag on towards the end. All right, so we need to get our pasture side ducts in, except for the main duct for the side. We can get our demisters in now. So we're gonna go ahead and grab your pasture side demister. All right, and we're gonna put our pasture side demister on. The reason we're not putting the pasture side main duct on is because we've got to bolt down the cover for the airbag and we need that added room to get to it. All right, so this side's marked right. See? And there's a corresponding spot over here, so we're going to you're going to have to tuck it up. Let me show you how this is going to go. Because this is going to cause a little bit of question. This goes like this. you got to dig it down. Ow. Inside there. 
and you lock it in like that. And then there's a pin stud over here on the corner. Let me show you here. There's this little hole right here. That's where this goes in. All right, and that's locked in place, okay? So, we are now ready to install our dashboard. So, let me go get my key so I can get in the, the trunk. I'll grab our dashboard, and we'll get our dashboard installed. So, I'll be right back. All right, before we can get the dashboard in, I got to put all of our ductwork back in. So, that also means we got to put our front horn back on that we took out you can see where i went crazy with the spray by the way this did stink for about a month afterwards but uh, this piece basically tells you where top is because you got to put this uh connector into that hole right there so this piece here just snaps right back down in here can be a pain in the ass to get once in a while, but you can get it. I got it out before, so. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yep. Should be able just to push it down in there. Make sure that it's all the way in, and it's not. I might have to reach around the back and make sure that our attachments are going in. And they're not. So, what I like to do sometimes when I'm messing with this thing, put the top down first and then push it down. And you'll know if you got it right, because it'll fit like that. All right. It will rest on top of the radio area. If you need to, when we get the dashboard on, you can always move that according to where the fronts go on. So, now plug our connector back into that. Now I think we're ready for our dashboard. So, let me go open up the other door. We'll get the dashboard out of the back. I'll show you how that goes in. You gotta have both of your front doors open when you put your dashboard in. That way you can walk across and get it lined up. So we're gonna get our dashboard installed. Just like you did when you took it out, you're gonna take it in from the passenger side and you're gonna slide it across. You gotta get it up over the steering wheel bump your camera while you're doing it all right i got the dashboard down and i'm going to show you how this fits back together after you get the passenger side installed you got to come over here to the driver's side and you got to pick it up over the steering wheel you also got to pick it up over the shifter and then grab your wiring pull your wiring through and you want to kind of Make sure that if yours has the clips, that the clips snap into the back. If they don't, then you want to make sure that your, mainly that your electrical is good. Um, these little horns here, that's what this is going to sit on. So you just got to kind of walk back and forth. All right, now we're going to come over here and we're going to pick this side up. I'm going to slide it over. Alright, get up on the other side and we gotta slide it over towards the pasture side some more. Alright, and if you got it in right, which I do believe we do, all your bolt holes for your black bolts will line up. And we have all of our bolt holes lining up. All right, so our dashboard is in. Let's start putting our bolts in. So, you wanna find all your special bolts. You should have some all over the place because there's a bunch of them. So, you wanna stick your bolts in these holes right here. 
get them started. You don't have to tighten them down right now. As you go through, you're going to put your fronts back on your ducts. You're going to make sure all your electrical is out. You're going to make sure that all your wiring is ready to go. But you're not going to tighten down none of your bolts until you have them all started. So you're going to go around here and you're going to, if you have any special looking bolts, you're going to put those in. I think there's only four on this side and there's like a couple on that side all right so we got our special bolts that come in over here we got the, the two that go on this corner here okay there's those two uh, we've got I'm gonna push this up because we got two bolts to go in there. So we'll put these two bolts in here. These are for the airbag module. We gotta make sure that our airbag's lined up. After you get your mounting bolts in for your plastic, then you can start putting your airbag in and your um, vent covers. There's a process you go through when you put this back together. Let's see if I can find any more of my hardware here. All right, there's another bolt. This bolt goes in this hole right here. There should be another one of these down there on the floor too. Now, if you remember from part one, these bolts right here, they go in that mounting bracket for the airbag cover. So don't get those confused with anything else. If you did due diligence and you divided up your bolts off of where they came from, then you're already 50 steps ahead because then you could just go to your container, grab what you need, and you're good to go. All right, we got our glove box retainer here we gotta put in. Don't tighten that up until you're done. So you should have three three normal bolts left on your floor. If you did it like I did. And those normal bolts are going to be for the glove box door itself. We'll put that on later. Alright, so let's see. We got our two bolts up top. We got our two bolts here. We got our four bolts on the other side. So our dashboard is in. Now we just got to put it all back together the way it came from. So, at this point, I'm going to go through here, tighten these bolts up. They should all be 8 millimeter. Nope, they're 7. They should all be 7 millimeter. Remember, you're tightening up plastic, so you want to make sure not to tighten it up so tight that you crack the plastic. I've done that a few times myself, so I can talk from experience. Don't want to crack your plastic. Alright, we got all of our bolts tightened up. And we're going to get our steering column installed so we can get that done. So you got three nuts. They go on those studs, and then you have a T40 bolt that goes in this hole right here. So you're going to pick your steering column up. You're going to get it. It's got a couple joints in it, so you're going to have to work against the joints. You can do it. It can be done. It's also flexible, so you want to make sure that you don't overextend the flexible part of it. And you want to get a, a nut started on one of your bolts here, or on one of your studs to hold the steering column up. You can. All right. All right, we got our steering column held up. Now you want to find that T40 bolt. And get that T40 bolt back in. It looks like this. That's the T40 bolt. You want to find your T40 socket. It should be around here somewhere. 
that bolt goes in this hole right here it has to go in before you can proceed because it helps with the alignment on the steering column Let's go ahead and put another bolt in the back here, or another nut on the back. Okay. All right. We got to get this other nut on the back down here. All right, our steering column is secured. Now I've got to locate that T40 bit, so we're going to pause this for right now, and we will be right back. All right, that'll kind of give you a small idea of where those bolts sit. You got your first stud that sits right up here. That's 13 millimeter. We're gonna zip those down first, and then we'll get our T40 on our ratchet, and we'll tighten up that bolt that goes in the side of the steering column. You wanna use a deep 13 millimeter socket when you do this. And tighten those up all the way. There we go. Get this side over here. All right. Now we'll switch over to our T40. This bolt goes up in here. It should screw right in if everything lined up properly. All right, it did. Be careful because this is a torque spit. You don't want to mess up the center of your bolt. It goes in this hole. <coughs> okay, you heard it get a little bit hard to turn right there. That's because it has Loctite on it. All right, so now we can get up here while we're on the driver's side. Clear our space here. We got some stuff we got to do over here. All right, so if you look down in here, you see the back of your headlight switch. You got a clip that looks like this that plugs into the back of your headlight switch. Make sure that when you plug this in that if it's got alignment notches like this one does, you line the notches up and you clip that back in, your headlight switches back in. Alright, so we got to get our duct back in on this side, so we're going to have to uh, reach in the back, find our duct. I think it's back here. This one right here. Yeah, your driver's side duct is the one that's got the screw in the bottom of it. You didn't see this part when we did part one. But see, we have a duct right here. It's got a screw that goes in it. So let's set that down in there like that. Should snap her in like that. And you got your Phillips screw down here on the floor. That's our screw right here. Put that in here. Take your screwdriver and tighten your screw up. Now another thing too is if you don't get the right screw in here, you'll find out real quick because it won't match anything else. So you want to make sure you get all your screws in your vents on the driver's side. We're going to go ahead and assemble the driver's side right now as far as we can. And then the pasture side we'll put together. All right, so our screw's in on this side. All right, make sure that we don't have anything in our door that we might have left in there. Don't worry about the uh, A-pillar trim right now because we've got to pull these clips out that stayed in, and we got to put those back in our trim. So we're going to do that at the very end. So, All right, so we need to get our dashboard put back in so let's go ahead and get our dashboard i'm gonna set you over here so that you can see a little bit while i put this dashboard together there we go 
dashboard should go in pretty easily. All right, so you got your gauges right here. If you want to clean your gauge cluster up, you can. This one got cracked. Wonder how that happened. Yeah, anyway. We gotta locate our dashboard connector. Which looks like it didn't get brought back up. Here's our dashboard connector. Alright, so we're gonna set this in the back. You're gonna slide it in the hole. Make sure your lock is up. If your lock's not up, then you're not going to be able to put your clip in. That does actually go in the other way, I think. Turn it around. It goes in this way. Yep, goes in that way. Then you push down on it and it locks it in place like that. Then we can turn our instrument panel over set it inside our dashboard like this and then we got four screws that go into the dashboard all right you want to get one in each corner Wait to put your bezel cover on until after you've got your battery reconnected later on. That way, if you turn your key on and your dashboard doesn't come up, we can go back in there and uh, make sure your connection's tight. But it's got a lock on it, so you should be all right. So, get our hardware in here. Hand tight's good enough. You don't have to go all the way with it unless you want to. These two bottom ones, they uh, need a longer extension to get to them. If you have tilt wheel, you don't have to worry about this part. You can just drop the tilt wheel down. But if you do not have tilt wheel, this is how you do it. You have to come in and get it like this. Because of the dashboard not being covered up, we're not going to put the uh, knee bolster back in at this point either. What we will do is we will reach down underneath and grab our connector for our... Let me try it this way. We will get our part for the deck lid. All right. Instrument panel back in. We got a clip down here. We got to push up into the opening here on our dash panel. This right here is for your trunk release. Make sure you get that nice and up there. All right, so we're done with the dashboard on the driver's side. Let's move to the middle. I'll show you the middle here. All right, so the middle, we have our vents. That's why you have to make sure that you can adjust these because they're gonna become critical here in just a minute. We're gonna put our center dashboard back together. All right, here's your center display upside down goes like that <clears throat> so you need to plug this plug back into it otherwise your airbag light will come on and you'll have a whole bunch of problems you'll actually get a check engine light for it all right so then we feed these vents in like this and then you just push this down into the dashboard like that that's all done now we can put our radio in so grab your connector for your radio you should have an antenna lead goes in here 
Make sure it goes down all the way. Put your radio like that and then slide it back in the hole. And this has got alignment tabs on it, so make sure that it sits square in the hole with the alignment tabs. Then you got two screws that put that together. So we'll get our two screws out that we had to put the radio in with. Okay, and these are sevens. So we'll put one in the top corner and one in the bottom corner. If you have all four of your screws, go ahead and put those in now. I've got, I think I have the other two screws for this, but like I said in part one, I'm going to be changing this out to a different radio, so I don't want to have to go through the long process of taking all these screws back out. So I only put two of them in to hold it in place, and then we'll be good for a little bit. our screws in let's go ahead and get our heating and air controls back up here so they're sitting down there in the corner so this opening right down here you can go ahead and send those up through so let me get that done real quick and we'll move on to the next item pull this one up and then we'll reach inside here apologize for the camera angles in this video <clears throat> like I said earlier I broke my tripod so the uh, ability for it to stay in one spot is no longer available but we're gonna make do with it because that's how we do in this this thing all right so we're gonna tip you down just a little bit so you can see so we gotta take our screws out of the back of our HVAC controls so we can put our knobs back in So set those in your hand This is your temperature control. This goes in the far left quadrant These are not keyed by the way, so the uh, blend or one will fit in the heater control one if you uh, Accidentally put it together Put our screw back in that one and then the gray one is your blend door control that goes in the middle so let's get the blend door controls in now. screw back in All right, we'll put our screw down in there okay so now at this point because you have other electrical you need to connect we're going to put the key in the ignition switch and we're going to disengage well actually we're going to disengage it off the uh, shifter control like we did in the part one push down Pull your shifter down put it down probably in like drive or second gear so you can get to these wires right here you gotta get these wires out this one this gray wire goes on this pin right here i think because we got a micro connector we got to plug into all right this one here this flat wire goes on here be careful when you put these in that you don't break your bezel cover and then this one here the broken one that we have on this cart that goes in this slot right here this one here this is your micro connector that goes in the bottom that's for your uh buttons and make sure they snap if they're gonna snap this one here is your uh ac bypass for your blend door that goes in there like that and that's what it looks like when that's all done okay so now we can put this back in and go ahead and line up your pins before you push and then push this back in like that all right your center's back in now i'm going to go ahead and get you set back up we're going to get the airbag and the glove box and all that put back in then we will put the console back in and then we'll hook the battery back up and see what happens 
So give me just one minute. All right, we're gonna get our airbag installed. <clears throat> this is the bracket that your cover will bolt to because you'll have a bolt here and a bolt here. They sit down in the back there. So carefully take your airbag, find your connectors, plug your connectors in. Set your airbag down on top of your dashboard. Nice and gentle. Make sure it sits flat. If it doesn't sit flat, find out why. This has got, uh, you know, I've got to tuck that underneath and then it sits down in here. It's got alignment tabs on it so you know where it goes. If you're not in the alignment tabs, it won't sit all the way. Remember, we have this piece right here that goes in here. That piece sits like this. It's a support bracket for the airbag. Get your bottom bolts in your airbag first. That way your brackets supported and then you can get your top bolts in. top bolts in for our airbag after you get your airbag bolts in you're gonna have to put your cover back down that I'm gonna have to do off camera because there's no way I can show you how to do it but basically you're gonna have to get up in there with a um, with a ratchet wrench you're going to have to get up in there and tighten it down with a ratchet wrench. That's the only way that I know of you can get that effectively. Alright, so let's see. Remember what size those were. I think those were 8 millimeter. Yep. and then we'll grab our cover out of the back and I'll show you how that goes in before I get underneath the dashboard and tighten it up all right so next up is our cover you got a couple openings right back in here that slides this down inside those openings just let it slide down don't latch it until you got the bolts back in it the bolts are tightened down in case you got to move this thing that's how your cover goes so i will get under here and tighten them up and i'll be right back all right so i got the two bolts in the back of the airbag that holds the cover on um little tech tip for you if you're interested when you do that make sure that you uh i know we did this earlier in the video and we put our ducts in over here but uh leave them out or at least if you're going to put them in put them in and just don't attach them because you're going to have to drop the the mister duct and you're going to have to take the uh, main duct out completely to get your hand up in there another thing you might want to know is uh, when you take the bolts out you can take them out using a swivel 10 ratcheting wrench like this one because you can get right up in there and break the bolts loose but when you put the bolts back in you need a stubby makes it a whole lot easier so we got to get our airbag cover down and set so let's see that sets down okay so we're going to have to looks like we're going to have to uh well we probably should have put the airbag cover down before we put the bolts in it because it's got to tuck up under the dashboard Give me one second. We're going to go ahead and get that done real quick. And then we'll come back and we'll get our glove box and stuff put in. All right. So we got our air box put together. Little piece of advice for you on that. Don't put the bolts in until you get that tucked underneath the dashboard. Because otherwise you're going to fight for a good long time. So we got to 
get our demister cover back in that is actually keyed as you can see so we will line that up make sure that the vents are facing the window we'll snap that back down in there there's that piece this is our trim piece we took off thinking that we had to and we didn't that goes back on there like that this is our dashboard part you want to look at how it's shaped all right so i do believe it goes like that make sure that your duct is lined up underneath it so that it slides in properly yeah that looks right pop that back in make sure that your duct works reach up under here and make sure that it slid into the duct properly so you don't have any loss of air all right now we're going to get underneath the dashboard and we're going to get down underneath the dashboard now i don't know why my camera light is on it's never done that before what's going on here all right anyway so we got to get our dashboard installed so we should have some screws down here let's see there's those three i think there's five that go across here no there's three i got two of them here i need the other one we gotta find our other screw that goes to our glove box door there's that it right there all right so you can put your glove box door back in. Remember, we don't have that latch locked down yet, so be very careful when you do this. But you do have enough hardware in it to where it should hold the glove box up while you put the bolts back in it. Let's see. Get our glove box put back up in here. Get your glove box locked in place here. And then you wanna get your other end screw started. And if you get it lined up into the, the alignment tab, it works a lot better. And then these are, I believe they're sevens like the rest of the car. We'll get under here with your seven and we'll tighten this up. Tighten that down nice and snug. Get this middle bolt in here and then you're done with your dad with your glove box. that down all right so let's draw your attention up here to the lock because this is the part that's of importance here see if I can get my camera to roll upward here there we go all right so let me zoom you in on the lock so that you can see what we're going to do here all right so we got our bolts still loose in here so what we're going to do is we're going to tighten those bolts up to where they're almost snug. And we're going to check our latch to make sure that it's going to come in contact with it properly. And then we're going to leave it loose enough so that we can slide it side to side if we need to in order to tighten up the glove box door. So then we're gonna pop our door up. Looks like we got it on the first go, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten these bolts up. 
right. Starting to look like a car again. All right, we'll pop that up. All right, we got these side panels here. Zoom you back so you can see where we're at here. We got these side panels we got to put back on, so I'll grab those real quick. We're not going to worry about the A pillars yet. We got to fix those. So. All right, so set your piece down in there like that, and that should snap right into that slot right there like that. Yep, that's right, because you see this ridge right here rides along that rubber strip. All right, so then this will go on the driver's side, so we'll go over there and do that real quick. I do not know why my camera light is on, but finally something right's happening with this stupid thing. All right, so let's go ahead and put our trim strip on this side, locks in on the bottom, and you bring it up here to the top pop it in and this one's ready to go yep this one's ready to go we just got to get the a-pillar trim put back on so let's see we are at the point where we could put our console in now because the next step is we've got to um, hook our battery back up so all of our stuff works so and grab our center well actually we can do it without the center console so all right let me hook the battery back up and we'll see if our electronics function all right so good news we didn't have any explosions i just had the car running for just about a minute just to make sure that all of our gauges and stuff worked like they're supposed to so we're going to go ahead and get our bezel put back over our instrument panel so we can get our switches hooked up for our driver controls and then we're going to we gotta get our lower cover put back on for our um system here so of course we'll do a pillars at the end all right so, all right we're over here now so we're gonna put our instrument cover bezel back on we got our button right here, which I've always wondered about. Okay, if it had a light in it, I don't think it does anymore. And it pops out like that. And it don't look like it has a light bulb in it. Looks like it should, but it don't. So, right. anyway, go ahead and put that back in the buttonhole here. Make sure that snaps in all the way so it doesn't pop out on you. All right, so we have the upper cover that's attached to our instrument panel cover. So we need to rotate this, you know, set it in like this. You gotta get it around the steering wheel. And you wanna set this down. All right. Make sure you got it ready to go before you hook your, hook your uh, lights and stuff up. This thing it's caught on the steering turn signal switch. So now we got it down. Reach back behind here. Look up your trunk release. All right. And then you have an alignment slip, alignment tab on the back. So you can line this up. Keep in mind you got a hidden screw in here. You got to put back too. So right, go ahead and. Snap our dashboard back down. Maybe. Let me get my light bulb over here so I can see what I'm doing. our dashboard over top of our steering column. All right, we gotta get that back down in there. Like I said, there's an alignment notch. It goes down.
Oh, I see. I'm not even in the notch. There we go. And you push that back in like this. Make sure that all your tabs go in where they need to go. Make sure it's nice and flush up against your car. Make sure that you don't have any not going in. down in there like that and pop that back down in there like that and your dashboard's back together all right you got a hidden bolt over here this one right here goes in this hidden bolt hole over here because ford can't make it easy they want to put a seven millimeter bolt in just about every spot they can i'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up here guys i'm having technical issues but basically, you're putting it back together the way you took it apart. Um, make sure you get your knobs on. Your console can go down last. When you put your trim back up on your A-pillars, because you don't have to take the A-pillar trim off, it just makes it easier to get the dashboard out. And if you have any straggler clips, get those out. And just put her back together again. So... Hope this helps. I'm sorry for all the technical problems. I was hoping we could make this a flawless video, even with a broken tripod. But it looks like we're not going to be able to, but we got most of it done. So uh, I'm going to finish this up, and I'll see you on the next one, guys. Okay, guys, I couldn't leave you that way. That's not how we do it at Ranger Auto. We finish our job, no matter how stressful it gets. So I got the car done. So the next thing I did after I got the uh, top of the uh, steering column done is you have to put the bottom in next on the steering column. And then after you get that done, that snaps back down real nice and easy. That's what those T10s were for. There's four of them in the back. All right. And then let me uh, show you something else that uh, came to my attention. Oh, my camera went blank on me. That's weird. All right, anyway, you can still see what we're doing here. All right, so the other thing that we did was we had to, uh, we put the knee bolster back in, but make sure you put your OBD2 connector in down here. Make sure you plug that in before you put the knee bolster up. Don't forget your um, hood release. Also, on the HVAC controls, there are five screws, not four. I know I said in the video there was four. There are five, okay? That's what they look like. There's one that has a flat washer on it. That goes on the very top up there, okay? That's important because that allows that little arm to roll back and forth without getting bound up all right also i went ahead and cleaned our console out um you want to take your car out of truck mode put it back in car mode to get your console in because you gotta rock the nose down and then roll it back and you can't roll it back if it's in truck mode because you got the seat right here up against the back of this seat and it won't make the travel down so you got to rock it back. It goes down really easy. Um, you've got this piece right here that you got to put in before you put the console in. That's got the push pins in it on the, each side. There's a Phillips screw on each side. They're up underneath like in part one. Then you come back here and you can get your armrest put in. There's that cover back there that snaps back in. And then also... Lastly, you want to get this switch put back in if you have this switch. If you don't, don't worry about it. Um, other than that, you want to start your car up, make sure it runs right, cycle your dials. We're going to cycle our dials for the video. See that? Moves nice and smooth now. No problems anymore. Make sure all your knobs work. All right, I went through and pushed all my buttons, made sure all my buttons worked. Um... Also, if you have keyless entry, 
make sure that your key fob did not lose the program. If it did, you're going to have to get in your owner's manual and look up the procedure to reprogram your key fob. Mine works just fine. I'll show you here in just a second. But uh, I could not leave you guys hanging like that. That is not how we do things. I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, I give you guys a front-to-back video and because I'm having problems over here that's unacceptable so I needed to do this so we'll end the video the right way we'll close the door we hit our key fob and we'll lock our car up so we'll go down here and we'll find our button here and yeah, see that our buttons work and that will properly end this video so I apologize for it being dark out it's like 2 in the morning here but I needed to do this for you guys because I was really frustrated earlier. And there's no way I'm going to leave you guys hanging. So, as you can see, I got a mess to clean up tomorrow. But anyway, I will catch you guys on the next one.